So welcome back, y'all. This is hour number two for Tampa Home Talk. And our appraiser was listening and had to pop on in. Let's get back to this real estate rant, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Dive right in, Katrina. So we were talking a little bit about, I had a past client. I don't know how much you heard, Danielle, but he he's they keep getting outbid for cash. And one of the, a lot of the things we're seeing right away in choosing an offer, if it's not cash, is what are you willing to do if we have an appraisal shortage? Because that's a very real thing that we're seeing right now. And some of them are terrible. Like the bank appraisals are awful, awful, awful. Yeah. How dare you? No, I'm just kidding. She, no, the I'm, one with the local lenders, because I think they're sending AMCs from I, who I, knows wherever. I know for a fact that right now there are quite a few appraisers coming from Sarasota to appraise in Newport Ritchie. That's that's a problem. That's a, a appraisal management companies picking the cheapest appraiser and the quickest appraiser and not the so, most qualified yeah, appraiser. Are they really cheap if they have to travel for two and a half hours? Absolutely, because we can just drive in a circle. I can get to Sarasota. It doesn't matter how much time I'm down there. If I have five inspections down there, I've made two it's grand to go to I've yeah. made two grand to go to Sarasota today. So there's a lot of reasons for it, but there are seven like seven thousand appraisers in the state of Florida. We should not be taking appraisers outside of their geographic competency and i cover as far north as orlando and as far south as sarasota but i don't do that on a regular basis for everybody i did expand within Isn't my career orlando east of here though exactly yeah it's well like northeast -ish. i mean here's the thing we're just we're seeing you know we can there's always a range right when we go in to look at a property value there's a high there's a low and there's kind of that median number and right now we're able to price everything on the upper end of the market because it's it's taking it you know looking at our numbers and we're still getting sometimes as many as 14 15 we had 29 offers remember that one couple that came in mm -hmm. we saw their st pete property they actually were radio show listeners. That's how we connected. And we got 29 offers on their home. And literally, we ended up taking only cash. So th I was saying in the last segment, Danielle, that you know you don't have to actually pay cash. You could write a cash offer, which means you don't have a financing contingency. And you're guaranteeing that your loan's going to go through. And you can do that. If you're solid enough, you're putting your escrow deposit on the line. So it's a risk. Uh, but it's a risk you might need to take in this market. So if you're willing to be the next highest comp, go for it. Pay that cash. Well, we're, they go are. Go for it. They are. I mean, we're but don't it. don't make it the appraiser's fault because the appraiser's there to assess risk for the bank that you bailed out 10 years ago. So well, when we have to bail those banks out again, who no, are you going to point the finger I, at? I don't agree. I don't agree. What happens if we do? I, I don't. We're, you I'm don't not. see any predatory lending in the market right now. I do, I'm not seeing what we saw in 08. Oh, I do. We're not in that market. I'm seeing it. Stated income new construction. Loans. Stated income loans. Yep. New construction. Mm -hmm. yep, new construction. New construction yep. is selling from, I won't name names, but they're selling from builder to builder to make their own comps. That's predatory lending when well, they are yeah. the lender and they have a two year within two years of you owning your house, you have to refinance. We're seeing those people lose their homes right I just, now. I don't understand that because we're seeing too much cash in the market. And I'm thinking about this from a logical perspective, right? Yeah. I'm putting three hundred thousand dollars of my own money, cash, real money, on a property and I'm paying cash. Even if that market dips, I'm not going to take 180 for it, which is what But in 2003, you did. And to, to, from 2003, 4, 5, you paid cash, it went you up and not. up and up. And I have plenty of clients that paid cash in Water's Edge in Newport Ritchie, paid cash to build a $400,000 house that is still to this day not worth $400,000. But did they sell when that market they are, was 180? Uh, yes. A lot of them foreclosed and investors How came in. How they foreclose if they paid cash? They refinanced their homes because they needed that's that cash back. That's a whole thing. The ones that paid cash and are still there today have never made back exactly. a nickel of their home. So that's what I'm saying. It's we're happening seeing, again. We're seeing people that have sold their property in other markets. They're bringing the cash here. And, you know, we're telling people don't use your house as an ATM. We've, we said that yeah. back then. We've said, and saying I'm saying it again, it again today. I'm yeah. saying it today. And I'm actually telling people if you have to have the house because you have nowhere to live, go for it, overpay. But if you are expecting a, a real estate appraiser to 
match your bidding war, it's not going to happen. So the, you can tell clearly the appraisers have completely different opinions. We have a totally different They're opinion because we go to federal side. prison for doing our job wrong. And the housing crisis taught us one thing. Yeah. The FBI comes and investigates all our all, I mean, every single house that went into right. foreclosure that I appraised. I was investigated. So I, I get what you're saying. And I'm not saying you shouldn't use within the realm of the comps you have. All I'm saying is the buyers that we are seeing in this market that are legit buyers, not stated income, yep. they are real buyers with real cash or real down payments, yep. are having to make up the difference to be competitive. Yeah. In the appraisal. I just think it's I just I think it's a silly time to to really just jump on there's enough inventory to go around, but what? not in specific. Well, wait a minute. No, 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 and no, not no. in specific <laughs> oh, pockets. No. Oh, not in specific Adam. pockets. Whew, triggered. Well, triggered. Adam, Adam, wait a minute. Adam. Head on up to 52. You could get affordable housing, and there's plenty of Who inventory. Who wants to live off of 52? Well, once that Ridge Road extension connects. It'll get better. And what's going to happen to Water's Edge and the brand new townhomes that are being built right next door to it. And what's going to happen to North Pasco and South of Hernando? It's going to grow. It's going to boom because we there's know. no affordable housing left. And the appraisers are going to keep it affordable is what They're, I just that's heard. Not that's not what I just, what I that's just not heard. Our, that's not, we don't have the ability no, to I, do I, that. I'm if the comps are there, we use it. The minute we have a buyer. Like I want your happens. cash buyers to make those comps for me. They Get are. them to buy. Go They're for it. Them. I need your sales. <laughs> <laughs> they are and finance buyers paying the difference yep. they're making it too we're and so those that. cash buyers are actually inflating the market just like they did in the in the, in the housing crisis the last time i don't know we didn't see that much cash back then we did not i saw enough of it and right now what i'm seeing is so let me millionaires ask you a question. are dropping millions Ca in cash. okay so that's that's the difference an appraiser would not really normally see the deal or be involved in it if it's cash because there's not an appraisal required today there. so the only time you're seeing it back then is if somebody is cash out refining for, which is, for which me, is why I can we're see. in a niche market. I do a lot of private appraising and I do a lot of, I have a huge attorney base and the real rich people that pay cash, they have an appraisal done. They don't sure. do I mean, this blindly. On the upper end. But if you've you got, know. if you're in that middle range oh, and I've, you've got I've plenty got a, of comps to support I have, it. I have a cash deal on my desk right now for 125000 in a condo. And I told them the value is 100% there. They, you they know why they agent, you no? know why they they do have an agent. You know why they have the agent sent them to me. Do you know why they want the appraisal? Okay. If you, you pay cash and you get an appraisal, the market dips, you now have proof of your loss. What does it have to do with anything? Taxes. Tax shield. Tax shield Got in it. the future. Yep. It's a tax per it protects that cash and that buyer and at least lets them write it off. Okay. So a smart agent's always going to send them my way to have that little tax paper that they need. You send them my way. I had one last we have. week from we, you. We do <laughs> get some. Yeah. I, I will tell you a lot of times, though, in this market, the deal is you get the house. Like you get, you get a contract. Because right now. If you've got cash, you're buying. But a lot of cash in the buyers last, right now want to. They want a the discount. Seven days, Danielle. I know. In three it's counties, insane. we had 1,675 homes go pending. But we only had 1,055 new ones come on the market. It's definitely. There's a lack of inventory. But I do know, you know, Spring Hill and Hernando. I'm trying to say this with a straight face. It's going to be the newest, hottest place to live because it's the only affordable place left to live. We have springs. I mean, it could be a cool... And hills. And, yeah, and hills. Spring, springs and, and hills. Holes. A lot of sinkholes. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, sinkholes. Mm. So we should go back to that for just a minute because I did see one yesterday, all cash buyer, different mm -hmm. client that we've been talking mm -hmm. about, sold their house from, I forget where they moved from, Texas, I think, paying cash here and lost his job, right? So sold their house there, paying cash here. That's where they're going to live. No debt, no payment. You see no problem in that, any of this, any of this conversation that you just said. He lost his job and used all his cash to buy a house. He worked for Fossil Watches. They're, they're, <sighs> some of those are going to be some of the first ones to go. Who cares if he's paying cash for his house? He's going to live there, right, with no housing payment. With no housing they're, payment, they're but no way to pay for the utilities either. No, no, they'll get a different job. They'll get a solar panels. The they'll put a generator in the backyard. So they'll drill for their own, Adam, they'll frack for their own propane. One of the properties we were going to make an offer on mm -hmm. had a sinkhole and it said that basically it wasn't that one, but it was two owners back. 
they did disclose it, but the engineering reports, and I want to touch on this really quick. We're going to have to do it and come back after yeah. the break. 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. Text the word soapbox. <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to talk about. Text the about, word soapbox. Okay. We're on it. I have a very relevant point to make, and you will agree with me yeah. when we come back after the break. So just watch. I already agree with you. This is Tampa Home Talk, and y'all knows where I'm going with this. Stick around. 813 813- 377-2775 and Regina will join us for segment two. <laughs> Back in a moment. Stick around. Poor gutter, guys. I have got, got to Adam's run out of tip of the week. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Leo Kane here with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. Okay. We're going back to this. Join. Okay, going back to. Okay, so. 813 377 2775. Text the word soapbox. Go. So, we were talking about going further north. We all know the genetic makeup's a little different of that soil. Mm -hmm. There are more sinkholes in mm -hmm. those northern counties. Mm -hmm. And so, Leo, you're the engineer, so tell me I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. If that, and, and you've seen it, so I think you might know what I'm going to say, but there was a sinkhole repair, right? And so the agent's saying, oh, we have all the engineering docs. It's fully insurable, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. My number one question is, who did the sinkhole repair? Are they still in business? And is that warranty transferable? Uh, warranty, warranty schmoranty is what I say about that. There are no real warranties on the work. Um, as far as the... Wait, let's talk more about that. And as far as who did the repair, that's kind of irrelevant. As long as there was a permit pulled... What if they're not in business anymore? Irrelevant. There's they, no warranty. No, most of them aren't. Yeah. It was a big scam anyways. So yeah. So so basically you have your engineering prime. report that's validating the installation. The installation was done at the time by a licensed contractor. That's what's important. doesn't matter if they're still in business. There is no warranty. So you've got okay. it repaired home. So let's imagine that you're a buyer. You want to buy in Hernando County, known for sinkholes, right? Or, or Spring Hill or... Or known areas. for scams. Let's just say that's what it is. Let's right? just say and Leo's so, like, evil twin with the goatee. Yeah. Because Leo would never buy in Spring well, Hill. But Theo may. Theo, 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 is Theo, a, Theo with the goatee might buy him. Yeah. <laughs> her name, M -O -M -L -S. It literally says sinkhole, yes or no, remediated, yes or no. Not kidding. It's a required field. It's a very required field for and an appraiser. So basically, Leo, if, Theo. if you're Theo. 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 Mr. Theo, yes. if you're buying in that area, and uh, a house has had, like the, a lot of the agents I've talked to in that area say, one that's had a repaired sinkhole is better than one that's never had one. Leo would say that too. And so what does Theo say? Like, would, would you? The, if Theo was going to buy in Hernando County, Theo would be looking for a remediated home. You would. Because the sinkholes are so prevalent up there. I mean, you got to think, like here in If Lan there's grout injections, right? Not just underpinning? Well, I, when I say remediated, that's grout injection. Un underpinning okay. doesn't, it does okay. not, you, you can grout inject without underpinning and you've stabilized the soil. You underpin, right. all you've done is put toothpicks in the ground. Correct. <laughs> But so let's describe Expensive that. Really. So if you're going to buy in Spring Hill, you're going to automatically no. go to the repair. Theo. 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 Right. Theo exactly. Would. The idea is if you're going to move to Spring Hill, you might as well just buy one that's already if, remediated if one versus that's one been, that's never been checked. If you have one that's been repaired, they've identified an issue, they've remediated an issue, and you've got all this extra concrete in the ground stabilizing your soil. Yeah. So I have a question for you, though. Or, for Leo or Why Theo? For, for, this one's for Leo about Theo. Okay. okay. Theo wants to buy this remediated house. All Theo right? is doing the right thing. He's doing the right thing, right? Real heady decision here. But they the, the sinkhole was two or three owners ago. They don't have the engineer's report. So how what, much can you give them the cash? What do you do with that? Because okay, you want to buy the house. Theo wants to buy the house. That's fantastic. But he's not a cash buyer, so, so insurance it, is required. Citizens, as we discussed in the last the hour, report, right? they want an engineer report. They want your firstborn child, uh, your blood type. I mean, anything they can do. You know, they want they want well, to know if you're if you've had coronavirus not or not. Theo's buying the home. I mean, the ultimately either either Hernando County, Spring Hill, or Hudson will have to have a copy of the permit information that can be pulled from their records, mm -hmm. or which Theo's, would include the engineering, which information, would include right? the engineering information, or Theo's not buying the home mm. yeah. because the insurance companies won't go just on permit alone, right? So oh, God, how, ex no. how, ex how expensive is that? Thinking about insurance, I wouldn't. Do you know how many people pull the permit, never do the work? 
how how expensive well, is it to the pull? Because I mean, you can go open forever. Because you oh. can go online and you know see that there's a permit. But yeah. how expensive is it to pull the? It's a the public report from search. The, I mean, they, they could charge you ten cents a page, or if it's digital, you can just download it yourself. Depends on how long ago it was mm-hmm. and if they have the records. So it's, it's not worth that, every penny. It's not mm-hmm. that expensive to do your own engineering tests, though, because of the way the soil structure is. Mm-hmm. Here you've got like 30, 40 feet. You've hit lime rock. Up there. You can go 120 feet and not hit lime rock, and you can get what's called a chimney sinkhole, where you actually have this just cavern that appears, and then it shifts um, in a different direction, then it continues going down. Mm -hmm. So you could actually have a piece of a sinkhole on your property, and the actual top of the sinkhole could be on your neighbor's. That's a chimney sinkhole. And who pays for that? Uh, well, you, when, hope, you hope it takes both houses when catastrophic, you're, call when it a hope day. And so much when there you're that it remediating, fills all of it. and I say this to, to people all the time, when you're remediating, it doesn't know to stop at the property line. It's going to fill the voids. So, That's what I was thinking. So when you're filling, they just keep filling until it stops, right? Pretty yes. much. Or they hit some dollar limit and then they have to reassess. But yeah, so when you. When oh, you, my sister, she in, in Safety Harbor, she filled in herself and three of her neighbors what all no. the houses that around her well, they were just harbor. dumping they were just dumping it and they drilled right into the middle of her kitchen and they were just dumping and dumping safety harbor days. is completely different see when we're talking days. about sinkholes in this region safety harbor is completely different safety harbor are, is clay form sinkholes everywhere else in the area is karst which is limestone form sinkholes so with Safety Harbor, sinkholes are exceedingly common, but they're not very dangerous because it's all clay shifting movement. They still need to be remediated, but that's why you see so and, many. But when you remediate yours, you basically voice. remediate all of your neighbors at the same time yeah, because it spreads well, if you, underneath the if homes you look and there's at, nothing you, if you can do about it. If you look at it. A, um, a diagram of sinkholes, and this will make sense, it kind of looks like veins really yeah. running underneath the soil. Mm-hmm. And so that grout injection or concrete fills all of those all voids that. so you have stable soil. Yep. Yeah. Good drawing picture. Putting for new footers in. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have to get to Regina, y'all. Like, yeah, before we bring back. the gutter people in. Yes. We have got to so, get Regina in. She's fun. AI, so we should ask your partners there if they can do the um, the risk, right, <laughs> for the sinkholes besides uh, citizens. You can ask them that question. <laughs> She's like, I'm out. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing insurance. We'll leave it to the experts. Insert exhibit A. <laughs> so are you, So... Walk about temporarily closed. You guys are reopening the crate in December. Fingers crossed. December, January. That's the plan. Okay. Yeah. That and is so plan. now you're working with Kevin temporarily, right at AIU, or at least yeah, Kevin, the little while. Italian staying at AIU. Yes, yes, I'm working with him. And so, talk about this. So a lot of companies really. Um, well, you you dive. I know you got a couple points you want to cover. I'll let you do it because we're out. Short on time. Uh, All right. So I'm helping Kevin and I'm working at AIU Insurance and they're a national wholesale. You had Brian, one of the partners in here earlier, and he was talking about PEO. What I do and I'm helping them with is to expand on their payroll. So they offer AIU payroll solutions. Um, They come about this service because I noticed that other service providers in the payroll area were actually going in, giving people good payroll. Not a problem with that. But then they were also going... um, and talking to them about their insurance. So what we do, because we're an insurance wholesaler, we offer insurance to you. You know all about this, mm-hmm. my friend. Oh, yeah. You're oh, one yeah. of us, oh, hey? Yeah. Um, so what we did was he's to been stop that. about the last hour. I know. To, he, it's all about insurance. So he's like, he's, he's like Leo he's with, geek out, yeah. with you know, literally anything else. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Get get Leo on. the legend. Anyway, so what he what we basically do is we offer this service to protect them. So we can give them a non-compete. We can also, like I'm looking and talking to accountants at the moment. They do a lot of payroll. I take the heartache over for a fee, you know, starting as low as $39 a month plus $6 per employee. And they can white label it. So they can actually say this is an added service and under their brand. Wow. So a lot of people are coming to us. Um, insurance agents are coming to us because they can offer this to the clients with the confidence that we're not going to go after their insurance. Right. So it's, it's ensuring that the partnership can be, you know, is solid like ours, Absolutely. my friend. That's Absolutely. right. So the payroll, you gave us an, an idea of what it costs. What about direct deposit? Is that because that stuff usually extra, isn't it? You know, the nice thing about it is, as I'm looking and referring here to my agency page, mm-hmm. the direct deposit doesn't cost anything. The good thing is that we don't have hidden fees. Everything's up front. You know, I'm the reason why I'm affiliated with this is it's good. 
and you know it's my reputation I'm going out to um, friends and colleagues and saying hey you need to get on board with this not only is it competitive pricing but you're dealing with you know a person every day the same person every day you know so it's not the case where you ring up and you speak to Theo or Leo or whichever who it's turning up on the day you're actually going to continue to develop that relationship so it makes it easier so they understand your needs and expectations that's what I like about it so are you doing any type of additional like HR support or anything like that? Oh, this is fantastic. Thanks for saying that. You just <laughs> saved me. Curious. So I know. HR. <laughs> so we actually have a HR portal and there's a hotline. So like for me, a small business owner, you know, I don't want to continue to have to pay 175 bucks to Mr. Stillman, but we love him. Um, so what this does is that I can actually ring somebody and uh, talk to this person and they can give me advice. And that's included in part of our payroll solutions. So it's nice. It's a nice add-on service. All right, real quick. Just to finalize segment number two, how do Australians say large? Oh, she always gets me to do this. You say large. Large. We go, well, my husband's American, so he says large. And we say large. Large. <laughs> you got to do it the other way around. All right, I do large, large. <laughs> Your American say. accent is very good. Though. I know You've it's 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 almost well. like it's it is so good. I have to say it in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good it is, my friend. Doing great. I know it's just so to hang out with this one. Is it kind of like making fun of hillbillies, like Australians? Is that what it feels like? Do you know like? what gets me is when I first come here. This is going to sound really bad. That's okay. But if I spoke to somebody and they had a real southern accent, like I was like. I know that you're smart and it's just your accent, right? <gasps> you know, because to us, I never heard that before. And we talk so fast. <sighs> All right, it's Tampa Home Talk. Stick around, we'll be back. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. We've just done a little shuffle in here. We now have uh, Amanda with A1 Gutter Solutions. How are you doing, Amanda? <laughs> I'm doing good. Wait, we're missing one. Who's your, who's your sidekick with you? This, this is my husband, Mike. He's the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Hi, Mike, the man, the myth, and the legend. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks for joining us. And so we're going to shift gutters a little bit. Shift gutters. <laughs> we're going to shift uh, gears a little bit and talk about gutters. And I know Danielle would love to chime in on that here and there. So uh, we'll talk right away about, about gutters and the benefits because so many of the builders do not build with gutters. <laughs> and people or offer them. Later. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't want anything to do with them. <laughs> yeah, they don't even want to offer them. There must be no money to make off of them. It's, no. They're yeah. not making money and they don't want the expense. And, you know, they can build without it. So right. It's usually the last option, too, mm -hmm. when it comes in. They don't. There's no regulation, so they don't have to put them on. That makes a valid point. Leo, I'm just, you don't have anything to say about that in terms of, like, codes or regulation? You see stuff all the time without gutters, how it does damage to the outside foundation of properties. Uh, gut gutters are an interesting thing in our world. We, we recommend them because they help with drainage um, and they help with um, preventing settlement. But there's so many bad gutter companies out there. They damage roof lines. They destroy roofs. Um, downspouts get kicked away. So you actually create jets to worsen your foundation. So it's like, and people don't maintain them. So you get trees growing out of them. So a, a, a good set of gutters that's properly maintained should be on every home. Especially a safety concern for me is like when you're walking in and out of your home, if you have that sheet of rain coming off the front door, you, yep. you, that's, a, that's a big area for trips, falls, and slips. Highly recommend gutters, but maintain them. And make sure that you know who you're getting them put on, who's putting them on. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so you let's talk about the benefits you, of gutters you, and installing them properly, yeah, shall you we? Yeah, you don't want someone installing gutters. And I see this all the time where someone spends $1,700, $2,500 put on gutters. And now they have to spend eight thousand dollars to replace the roof, and that's well, what you don't want to have. I can happen. tell you this: all of our guests for Tampa Home Talk are either in introduced by one of our customers that's used your services and you did an amazing job. You have amazing reviews on a topic we want to cover, um, or you're a business connection, and we can we can verify your reviews and some mm -hmm. of your work. And that's why I tell the horror stories of not using people who are right. on our show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why we're a number one seamless gutter solutions. There was no standards in the industry. And when Mike got out of the sheet metal union, 
and decided to do gutter, just gutter, um, after doing architectural roofing, we decided that there needed to be some process and some standards um, because there was none. There was no licensing. And uh, What made you want to do gutters? It's something I did in the sheet metal union. I was an okay. architectural mm -hmm. sheet metal worker. Which is metal roofing. Right. Gutters is like the easiest part of metal roofing. So You don't yes. have to walk a roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense mm -hmm. to me. And the homes they build in Florida, they don't put any gutters on them. So there's a lot Now, of are there different types of gutters? Because I see the ones with like the leaf Definitely. cover and stuff like that. So what are there variations and what are there? Yes, there's seamless gutters, mostly six inch seamless is what they use. We have a machine that we pull up to the house with and mm -hmm. we can run exact measurements. So there are no seams in the actual mm -hmm. gutters to keep them from leaking. Yeah, we also do custom gutter in seven inch, eight inch, half rounds. and um, Half rounds are nice. Mm -hmm. They're more historic. Yeah. Yeah. Leo, what's, what's more important about having a seamless gutter versus a seam or a cut in the gutter? Well, I mean, it, it just, as you said, um, and I said before, like with a seam, you, that's basically a point where water can corrode. Water gets between the seam, um, starts corroding your gutter, and they start leaking. Seamless, you don't have that issue. It's mm -hmm. one continuous piece of metal or plastic or PVC or whatever material it is, and it extends down, so you're less likely to have leaks. Um, you're less likely to have, like, when your shingles, the granules start falling into the gutters, they're less likely to get caught in that seam because there is no seam. So I highly recommend right. the seamless approach. Right. On the seamless, though, there are seams as you would call them on the inside outside miters um, but the machines that run they can run the coils are usually a little over 600 feet so you could run a seamless piece out but when you come into inside outside miters you have to which is why we when we started we created the lifetime warranty on leaks where there was none and i think the entire state of florida has now caught on to the lifetime warranty um, the caulking wears down usually around six to seven years later and that needs to be heated up and pulled out and put new in that's a good question or a topic to cover is the maintenance on mm -hmm. gutters mm -hmm. yeah you can't just install gutter and never think about it again you do need a maintenance program mm -hmm. which we start at 279 for the year um, you can get into the well maintenance program and, and so that's talk well about that what it. is the maintenance what are you doing um, we're coming by three times a year getting on the roof and making sure that everything is still flowing a lot of things can get in the gutter if you don't don't uh, cap them off with leaf protection. So you guys are cleaning out any debris that's in there, yes. and are you putting the leaf protectors on? We there? can. You can purchase it. We're we're not real pushy, so we'll put as little or as much on there that you want, um, and as well as gutter. Um, so if somebody has the protection with you, whether they have the leaf filters or they don't, are you guys cleaning them out? You do. You still, even if you get leaf protection, you still need to keep the roof clean and you still need to get up there and check and make sure hangers aren't loose or um, nut trees haven't hit the gutter or downspouts are, you know, secure. Huh? Yes, yeah. right. This year we had a bird's nest in our garage gutter that filled the whole thing up with, and I didn't think we needed uh, leaf guard, but apparently the bird's nest, you know, chose to change our what mind on that. What kind of stuff have you seen in gutters, Leo? I know you've seen trees, right? Like that's the obvious, but what else? Sure. I never thought of a bird nest. Yeah, yes. bird nest, mm -hmm. um, rat nest, mouse nest. Snake I mean, eggs. Well, then Snake you eggs. also find whatever the bird brought up there. We found yeah. candy wrappers. We oh, found sure. all kinds of yeah. stuff. Probably like anything, rodents. Anything that the anything. bird uses mm -hmm. to I make I mean, you got to think of it like this. A, like um, a mating bald eagle couple, their nest can get up to one ton in weight. So even these smaller birds, their, their nests start weighing. And once you start yeah. adding weight to your gutters, it starts mm -hmm. pulling it off the eaves that start messing with the pitch now it can't it can't drain properly it's crazy that a little animal can make something so what about heavy? a mud dauber what are those are that's what they're called those mm. mud daubers are those the wasps i have seen those the size of a foyer the wow. size of an yeah, entry i mean it's very an like a gutter maintenance program if you're listening and, and if i can just get one thing across in these past two hours is get on a yeah. gutter maintenance program mm -hmm. and don't do it yourself it's a very dangerous part of it's like the edge of your roof. My it, dad broke his neck doing yeah. it himself. And, and you, when you're really? putting ladders up against the roof and you're putting ladders up against a gutter, you're damaging them. Right. Hire a professional. Get on a gutter maintenance plan. Yeah, like me. I'm afraid one put off the ground, so I'm definitely mm. not getting on the right. roof. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree with you. And you do have to hire a reputable company. A lot of these companies go and they clean the gutter out, but they forget about the downspouts or the underground drainage that's attached to it. So even though you're cleaning the gutter, it's still possibly not working. So you guys are cleaning everything all the way out? Everything. Whole system on making sure it's working everything well worth the money Applying i mean it's not cough, something you want to whatever. do yourself yes. right yes i mean you can of, but it's not worth the injury no. the leaves will get in there and they actually 
turn to dirt and you and get build worms a dam. and all yeah. thing. It's really good compost for the So leaves. do the gutters come in any other colors? Because I've seen yes. white and I've seen brown. There's, many colors. Yeah, many colors in aluminum and there's copper also, but there's usually around 32 colors that you can choose. Yeah, wow, coating? 32 colors. I, I would have I've never known. Literally white I've literally there, seen white a, and tan a, and brown. A material called galvalume. Which is what yes, it sounds like. Which we install a lot. And, of. and it, it, it comes with a Kynar coating. And that Kynar coating, that powder coat, could be any, any color. Any color. Can you explain all that? Like so it's basically powder dipped. A type of metal. Powder coating is basically just imagine someone spray painting it, Got it. in a factory to, for simplicity. So yeah, you can get them in any colors. I've seen them archi architectural gutters that, are, that need to match a certain like. Profile. A profile or trim or roof color. I mean, they come in all different colors. What about on the front of the house? You get like, because sometimes it look weird right on the front of the house with some of these pitches and angles. Well, that's where you come into using, you know, a reputable company or a handyman to install the gutter. You know, it's important. I'm a visual person, so um, we're pretty picky about the way the gutters look. Yes, it's got to be up there correct. You want to make sure it's pitching. Mm -hmm downspouts you want to kind of put them on the sides of the home so you don't see them right from the front and so then much. it's also important when you have steeper roofs that the uh, one side of the gutter actually is taller than the other side because if it's, the roof is too steep you can have a gutter system but it, there's something called overshooting the gutters yeah, yeah. so it's like you don't even have a gutter system is at that all right. spilling out? it literally runs it, right off like a yeah. waterfall yeah it just runs it's right off the top right it doesn't even top. go into the gutter so the two ways to fix that is to get an oversized gutter mm -hmm. or to get a gutter that basically has a lip that goes up and then if you get the wrong company designing that lip, it's going to look horrendous. It's almost like That's imagining a, really a good water point. slide, like the curve of a water slide. Yeah. You've got to get that lip or something mm -hmm. would flop over the side. This it's happens like a lot actually on barrel tile roofs or metal roofs. Mm -hmm. People don't want to pay enough for the larger gutter when they really need it. And you get a lot of overshooting. We've had companies that will put six inch on tile and they end up having to go and put a shield all the way around the house. So they're oh, like installing looks, twice. Ah, when it just yeah they just need to use the bigger gutter and, and, and if you think about it you probably do have you have gutter systems and you have some what we call valleys is where two roof pitches meet yes. you probably have a small shield piece there anyway so right. you can look on your own yes. you can look on your own house to see that kind of shielding so i guess let me ask the million dollar question like how much do gutters cost and i know it totally depends on the house yeah i think gutters right now um are running anywhere from four to thirteen dollars a foot for residential we do commercial too which you know goes past that but so on an average home let's say it's two thousand square feet you well, know i, I know we're, it's yeah on the even style. though yeah even though it's two thousand square feet we're uh, measuring the outside of the home so yeah, linear footage you know could be around 300 feet or something like that for a house like that what's the range in something that size like how many square feet do you see Let's just do a standard boring box subdivision. Um, so usually it's a couple hundred feet, yes, linear usually feet. usually a couple hundred mm -hmm. feet. So, so you're usually around 1,500 probably. For the whole That's not property. Yep, yeah, I would say so. That's the ballpark range there. And then the protection that the gutter gives your house. Oh, yeah, from, yeah. from the settlement, from the, the divots created. And your the, landscaping. The landscaping. Yeah. It'll destroy your yeah. landscaping mm -hmm. to not have gutters. And from the potential falling and tripping as you come out of your house with your hands over your head trying to dodge yeah. the rainfall. And if the property's not sloped right, too, we offer drainage. So we can take that rainwater that we've collected and get it a, even further away from the home. So if you it's guys are, are you doing the underground? We do underground drainage oh. as well. Underground drainage is the smartest thing that I've ever seen. I have a customer you I have a customer, to. too. Like, I need your card. 813-377-2775. That's 813 Three three seven seven two seven seven five. Yeah. Text the word gutter. Yep. Yeah. And we will. I have hook a really you up. good friend that every time it rains, she has a lake in her backyard, and oh, it's not wow. really her fault as much as it's her neighbors. That's what I was thinking. It can be your neighbors because that customer. She's willing yeah. to pay to have her neighbors' gutter spout fixed. Really? That's how bad it is. Wow. Sometimes with the way they roll too, like this particular mm -hmm. house I'm thinking of, the one behind it's higher. And so they, they really need to... They need yeah. an underground gutter just sure. to push it out into the street. Yeah. And it would be Something done like that. With. We like to cut the gutter back and pitch it all one direction. Maybe put a larger spout in and then tie into drainage and get it really far away. Are you guys doing French drains too? Not it's usually. We, no, that's more that like the foundation. Okay. Um, all right. 
if you want some gutter information, and we'll see what we can uh, talk to them about a promotion for our listeners. Yeah, but absolutely. Text 813-377-2775 if you want some information or you want to check out the gutter maintenance program. That sounds yeah. like a deal. Yeah. Look up A number one seamless gutter solutions. We'd yeah. love to help you. And we'll touch you their info. 813-377-2775. Thank you.